Yes. Hello. So we can oh, promote God. it, you know? All right. Are you taking a picture or video? Let's do picture. Okay. All right, cool. Yes, dog face. <laughs> All right. That's cute. All right. And then really, yes. Oh, what's your cat's name? Ryu. Ryu, that's cute. Yeah, he shows okay, up now, in <laughs> I'm sorry, what? What? He shows up in some of our videos. Oh, that's totally fine. Um, <laughs> It's recording a GIF right now. So just like you <laughs> for Twitter, so we Twitter. can promote. <laughs> <laughs> so hi, I'm Faithy J. <laughs> hi. Yes, it's very nice to meet you over the nice internet. <laughs> Jeez, you take forever. Okay, I don't know what else to do. All right. Cool. I'm tweeting it. Cool. Okay, we're we're good. We're ready. All right. Cool. Hmm. All right. Greetings, everybody. I'm Faithy J, and you're watching Teen Trap TV, where we equip you with the tools to have your life and career and have fun while doing it. So we have Addie Nicole of Hallocene. Um, Abby has Hi. Been, <laughs> yes. He's been in the music industry since age 12. He's a phenomenal vocalist, guitarist, all around musician, songwriter, businesswoman, legend of Zelda enthusiast, a female <laughs> independent guru, and creative preneur. You know, she is um, full of talents, as you can see. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so her hobbies are anything music and, you know, cat related, as you see in the, bath in the background. Talk the bathroom. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes, and um, he's humble. Don't be fooled, ladies and gentlemen. He's a powerhouse motivator through her lyrics and an inspiration to teens and young adult young adults worldwide. So I am so excited for you to be here today. Thank you so much. Ah, so um, nice. That was a yeah. wonderful intro. Thank you. Yes, of course. <laughs> so welcome to our show. <laughs> and, Thanks for um, having me. Of course. Thank you for being here <laughs> while over the internet. You know? Let me give our audience a little background on your band, and we'll dive right into our, you know, intimate fireside chat. So, your band, Hallocene, was formed in 2008, and originally from Phoenix, Arizona, Hallocene is a 100% independently run pop rock band. They're mm -hmm. to cross genre boundaries. With her musical style, they've performed at some of the world's biggest stages, and their United States tour resume includes opening for platinum artists, Blink-182, Fall Out Boy, Jimmy Eat World, Flogging Molly, The Warp Tour 2011 and 2013, from South by Southwest, CNJ, and Summerfest. So that is quite the resume there. It's like a lot when you lay it all out like that. <laughs> it's great. So, yes. Um, to name a few, they've been featured on NBC and CW and currently have well over half a million views on YouTube. And with high energy and outgoing personalities, Holocene has toured the country while providing top 40 music hits to hundreds of fans, high schools, military bases, colleges, uh, Fortune 500 companies, malls, casinos, and festivals, and anywhere their fans request them to be. So they have the fan base there. They are great. So, yes, I'm so glad. <laughs> so let's start it. Um, yeah, so members heart uh Bradley Avery Polizzi. Oh, you're kind of breaking up on me. Oh no, I am. Yeah. Hey. Wait, what would, what did you just say? <laughs> okay. I said so Oh, now I can't hear you at all. Oh, really? Wait, now I can. You can. <laughs> I can hear you just now what you just said. What now? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you right okay, now. Okay, good. That was, that was weird. I don't know what that was. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let's proceed. Okay. So, you and your band members, Cash Heart, 
Bradley Amick, Justin Polizzi. Did I say that right? Polizzi? Yes. Yes, good. Okay. And Sebastian McKelvey are obviously known worldwide. But those in the audience that are just being introduced to you guys, tell us a little bit about you and your band. Uh, well, we're a pop rock band. Um, we've been around for a long time, as you said, about seven years now. And we started out as a, just an original band doing original music. We have three albums out. Awesome. And uh, more recently, we started doing covers consistently and uploading rockified covers of pop songs. That's awesome. And um, okay, can you shut that? The brown? Thank you. I look really washed out. So I was like, there we go. <laughs> you can kind of see my features now. All right. <laughs> cool. Your band name, Hallucine. And how did the name come about? <laughs> so when we formed the band, I was still in high school. And I guess I shouldn't condone this, but I was texting during class. I was texting Brad. We had just formed the band oh. and we were trying to come up with a name for it. And mm -hmm. um uh, he typed out the word Holocene, but I guess he misspelled it and he sent me Hallocene oh. instead. And it's so funny that like our whole existence now depends on like a misspelled text, but it really yeah. did. It was just, it sounded cool and we friend. thought it was really awesome. So yeah. Yeah. So what, you know, I don't even know what Holocene means. So if you can educate me on that really quick. <laughs> Holocene is a geological time period. It's the current geological okay. time period. So it's kind of like Jurassic, Jurassic, like the, you know, prehistoric times, but like. Oh, wow. It's, okay. It's awesome. Current. Yeah. But that then so cool. a guy named Bon Iver rela released a song called Holocene and okay. it got a Grammy. It became like really famous. It's a good song, yeah. but it has nothing to do with us. And so everybody right. thinks that that's us now, like that we're named oh, after that well. song. But we came out before the song even came out. So yeah. So technically he stole it from you. So <laughs> he did. <laughs> <from us. laughs> yes. And um, a follow up question to that. How did you decide to collaborate together and become a game, uh, become a band? Um, actually Craigslist, I made a okay. posting on Craigslist and Brad found us, um, or found me, I should say. And I went over to his house. He was a mm -hmm. uh, producer at the time. He was just recording artists and, um, he wanted to create a solo artist. And I didn't know that when I went over, but I started recording a song with him and I was like, I actually want to be in a band. Is that cool? And he was like, yeah, yeah I mean, why not? You know? So yeah. that ended up being Allison. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, wonderful. Um, so let's just get this out of the way. Um, what was it like opening up for Blink-182 and Fall Out Boy? <laughs> uh, really amazing. Probably one of the coolest things that's ever happened to me. Um, the Fall Out Boy, so there's, there was two separate dates. We opened mm -hmm. for, we've actually technically opened for Blink-182 twice, but one was on a different stage. There was two stages at the time, but we okay. opened up the entire day. So we were the only band playing that day. And that was mm -hmm. when Fall Out Boy played. So I haven't actually met Fall Out Boy, but I did meet Blink-182. And Mark is the coolest person I've ever met in my entire life. He, oh. like, you know, we really got to know him. He, like, offered mm -hmm. us earplugs, which we kept because, duh, they're from Mark Hoppus. Like, <laughs> it was amazing. And um, he, like, thanked our band on stage and was like, give it up for your hometown heroes house yeah. scene. And I was like, this guy is awesome. So he's yeah. a huge inspiration to me now. He's, I, I just want to be like him because he's just such a great guy. Yeah, it's amazing how much humility and um, gratefulness makes yeah. you want to know that person and look up to them. It's it's crazy. Yeah, I know. It was really, because he, he didn't have to talk to me, you know, but he spent time right. with us and it was the, the best yeah. time ever. It was great. Yeah, for sure. That's awesome. Well, great. Um, so, as a follow-up to that, <laughs> on your third studio album, Make It Loud, you have called you have a song called "Tell Me What." It sounds really yeah. pop punk, and I'm sure Blink 182 fans love it. So, have you noticed <laughs> that you gained um, some fans from Blink 182? Yeah, of yeah. course. I mean, I think what's great about our band is we're not, you know, too confined to one genre. We kind of span mm -hmm. a few different genres, and we don't limit ourselves to just rock or just pop right. or whatever you know we can yeah it's go all yeah. over the place and try to appeal to everybody and um just try and make great music so um mm -hmm. we find people are fans of us they're they're blink 182 fans or they're 
Selena Gomez fans or they're, yeah. you know, Metallica fans. Like there's people right. all over the board. It's really awesome. Cause I'm yeah. a fan of all kinds of music too. Me too. Yeah. Well, that's wonderful. Awesome. And um, I see that you post many um, well put together YouTube covers. So I, yeah, for example, your, your most recent cover of Ariana Grande's song Focus, uh, it looked like it was a lot of fun to make. Um, so what inspired you to start creating covers and would you mind sharing your mindset of the creative process? Sure. Um, well, let's see. When I first started creating covers, we were just uploading our original stuff onto YouTube and we got kind of a small following going there. And mm -hmm. somebody requested that we cover Yellow Card uh, Ocean Avenue. So okay. we put up a acoustic cover of that song and it was just kind of a cute little video of us hanging out at the time. And it really, it was really popular and people liked it a lot. So um, that was a long time ago and we would upload covers every once in a while back then. But mm -hmm. then just in this past year, we were like, you know what, let's do this. We have the camera, we have the recording equipment, we can do this quickly. So let's start yeah. doing covers regularly. And um, I think the creative process is just hearing a song that has, you know, inspires something else out of you. And I, I used to do this as a kid too. I would hear a certain song and I'd be like, you know, I think this song might be better if we did it like this. And then mm -hmm. you just kind of run with that idea and create it, make it your own and people like it. So it's awesome. Awesome. That's wonderful. Um, so I found my place here. <laughs> okay. Um, what the heck? Okay. I found it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so many people probably don't realize that the business skills that indie artists have to have in order to make it in the industry. So do you mm -hmm. consider yourself an entrepreneur as well as a musician? And why? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, especially as uh, an independent artist, you have mm -hmm. to do everything yourself. And oh, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. I mean, just Brad and I, I mean, I think we've talked to a couple of you through Fiverr, which is where we mm -hmm. uh, make a lot of our own income. And, you know, yeah. you have to be a business. You have to treat it like a mm -hmm. business. You know, a lot of people don't realize that we have to budget our advertising for our yes. videos. You know, how much mm -hmm. are we going to pay for advertising? People need to, you know, we need to map all of that out. So um, yeah, it's sure. not just being in a band. It's not just all fun and games and yeah, you know, no. whatever, yeah. being silly rock stars or whatever. It's, it's yeah. a lot of hard work. And um planning out touring and all that kind of stuff there's a lot oh, yeah. that goes into it yeah i mean i'm a, i'm a musician myself and like i just relate to that a lot because a lot of people think it's oh fun and games famous overnight no no yeah. <laughs> so yeah, yeah I, I totally relate so um aspect of being an independent artist and music making process excites you the most and what part discourages you what a, i'm sorry could you repeat that one more time yeah um, which aspect of being an independent artist and the music making process excites you the most and what part discourages you? I think the best part about being an artist is just hearing people's feedback and hearing that they like it. And yeah. especially when it, when it changes them or affects their life in in a positive right. way. Yeah. Um, I, I think that's, you know, that's the whole reason why we do this. And um, that's, I mean, you know, it's, what we do it for and did you mm -hmm. say discourages us discourages me too yes yes what part okay. just makes you feel like oh my gosh <laughs> <laughs> oh god why yeah um i mean i don't know i guess just you know time keeps going by we've we've been a band oh, yeah. for seven years now and we're still wow. independent wow. which is totally fine because we're doing a lot by yeah. ourselves we could have joined an indie label by now but oh, you yeah. know they they didn't why we weren't able no to need. do a whole lot for us. yeah right we've yeah. got it going ourselves so um but i mean you know everybody wants to be successful and and oh, we've yeah. definitely found a certain amount of success but it, it's not you know where we hoped to be and mm -hmm. i think that's just with everybody everybody hopes to be a certain spot so you right. kind of have to just right. accept where you're at and be really happy with where you're at and we are really happy with where we're at yeah and i always say the saying like be happy with who you are and what you like are doing now while working for what you want so that just kind of yeah. made me think of that so Absolutely. awesome so um let's talk about candidly about you um Let's talk about what age you realized you were interested in music and how your story as the front woman of Hello Scene began. Well, that's a long story. Really? Well, let's, let's 
oh, I understand. Let's let's <laughs> shorten it. But I want to know every detail. <laughs> okay. Yeah, right. So, um, yeah, people ask me all the time, like, oh, when did you start getting into singing? What, what, you know, right, when did right. you start really diving into music? And it's hard for me to say. I just always have. Um, I was going through some old files with my mom from school, and mm -hmm. we found this little paper or whatever and it says like what do you want to be when you grow up and it says singer mm -hmm. like from first grade like I, yeah I've always oh yeah been into singing. so um but uh I mean it just kept progressing and uh you know I, I got into rock music and um well actually what's funny is I used to be into you know pop singers I was into like Britney mm -hmm. Spears she was my favorite right. and um I got connected with her songs really early on and I you know would read a, the little booklet I'd get so excited and I was reading the booklet and I'm like her names aren't under any of these songs like, yeah. she didn't write yeah. any of these and I was like what's the point of like even yeah. doing that so I uh I wanted to start writing my own songs. I got into, you know, Avril Lavigne and that kind of led oh, into yeah. Blink-182, Paramore and all that kind mm -hmm. of stuff. So, um, and then, yeah, the Craigslist posting just led into this whole new section of my life. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, everything happens for a reason. So. Exactly. There you go. That's wonderful. So I'm sure you always get asked, you know, about your musical inspirations, which you kind of hit up on just now. Yeah. But growing up, and all your immediate life inspired you or like who in your immediate life inspired you and how for example was there a sixth grade teacher who said your voice is amazing you're gonna go far or a family member who said or told you you should play guitar because you're good <laughs> i'm very thankful to have a lot of people that that have been supportive of me um my dad plays guitar so i've always okay. been kind of around that he's he's like an 80s metal shredder like just totally. me too <laughs> yeah yeah, he's, yeah, he's yeah my, except my dad was a bass player you know, oh okay yeah. <laughs> that's awesome yeah no um i was really inspired by him and he was always super supportive and in, in whatever i did he bought me my first guitar when i was only nine oh and um my mom was super supportive as well. Uh, you know, I told her really early on, I was like, I want to be a singer. I want to do whatever it takes. So she yeah. really pushed me even when I didn't want to do it anymore. She was like, no, you yeah. said you wanted that. So keep doing right. it. So I'm really grateful for that. Um, and then one time in high school, so like at the end of senior year, when I was graduating, they called us in and they were like, okay, so you're graduating, you're going to go on to university, um, you got accepted. And they told me that I got accepted to three different universities and oh. I got a scholarship to one of them. And I was like, oh, awesome. Cause I, I did really well in school. Didn't like it, but I did really well. Oh, yeah, that's important. And, um, <laughs> yeah. Right. And, um, so, but so she's like, oh, so which one are you going to go to? And I was like, you know, I just, I really want to follow my dreams. I'm going to be in a band. I'm not, picking yeah. a college right now I mean maybe somewhere down the road but I'm gonna do that and she was like that's awesome I love your music <laughs> no way so it was really cool that she was even supportive of me at that time too so you know if I hadn't I, I mean college you know some some people I think it's definitely really important for them but I was so self-motivated to do yeah. Yeah. this music thing and I knew that if I went to college I was gonna go for journalism or something else so. right right but yeah, it was it was a really cool moment, and I, I think yeah. back on it a lot. That's wonderful. And so, you know, who are your musical inspirations, by the way? Um, that's hard. <laughs> I'm kind yeah. of all over the place, but um, I really love Pentatonix right now. I'm oh, super me into too. Them. Yeah, yeah, they're great. they're great. Um, I do really like Taylor Swift. I yeah. um, Blink One Eighty Two is a huge one. Mm -hmm. Aerosmith is a huge one. Motley Crue is a huge one. I'm yeah. I'm like all over the board, but yeah. Oh yeah, it's <laughs> awesome yeah, I mean, though. I, I love everything. It's, it's it's I consider everything that I hear an inspiration. Right, and you have to have respect for every you know genre because they put in the same amount of work. You know. Exactly. So, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> those that are musically inclined are usually more creative, and the school environment usually doesn't work for them. Yeah. me and you you know no <laughs> so i read on reddit that you hated school and that you were you know bullied tell us a little bit about that and how you're able to use your creative gifts to overcome that part of your life yeah um yeah i mean i definitely it didn't i school just didn't resonate for, with me it just wasn't my thing um 
but I, I did, I, you know, instead of just sitting there and hating it, I put all of my energy into making sure that I did a good job yeah. and yeah. Um, trying to get good grades, which is actually really helpful. And it's really helped me a lot. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I got bullied a lot, especially early on in like middle school, going into high school, I dressed different. And when I say different, I mean, like really, di like I look back on it and I'm like, Wow, I, I <laughs> that was pretty crazy. But you know, I was being myself and I was embracing yeah. it and I was was proud of who I was and, and that's awesome. So I, you know, I just stuck to my guns. But yeah, I mean, I got bullied a little bit, but you know, I just I turned all of that into to music and I had one yep. class, um, a songwriting class, which actually still exists, and I went back to that class later on and spoke to the students and, um, mm -hmm. and, you know, told them like, Hey, this is, I was in this class and now I'm doing this and they're, you know, gets their spirits up and everything. Yeah. But that was my one class where I felt like, yeah, like I know what I'm doing here. I want to I'm yeah. gonna get it all out. And I write it all down on a, on a notepad. I had this big thick notepad and it was completely full by the end of the school year every year. So, yeah. But yeah, you just, you know, you turn all of your negative stuff into positive stuff and mm -hmm. um, just keep on, dreaming until yeah. you know uh, you know I was like I just got to make it through high school <laughs> yeah <laughs> I mean yeah. I, got, I, yeah I got all the the sky's the limit you know yeah it's super important to be optimistic throughout this um you know industry because there will be people that are going to judge you no matter what so yeah you know you just have to you know, goals and yeah. yeah keeping goals and keeping the uh, bright spirit is super important oh yeah and it's it's important to take that negative energy like you said turn it into something positive and use it as motivation so i think that was wonderful so mm -hmm. i feel like i'm saying wonderful a lot am i <laughs> i don't know <laughs> oh well that's good though you're being positive <laughs> okay one second someone is saying hi i'm gonna respond hi i don't want to be hi moha caesar <laughs> yes <laughs> want to say hi really quick all right cool let's continue um let's see all right in this industry <laughs> um having friends and family that are supportive is very important um without hesitating in apologies in advance for anyone that thought you they were there uh your number one you know draft pick um who's your best friend and why oh that's really hard. I know. I think I have best friends for different things, you know? Like, oh, yeah. Um, I mean, my mom is probably my best, best friend, but, you know, she's also been around my life since I was a child. So, yeah. <laughs> um, but then, uh, you know, I have a friend named Kylie and we do everything together. She's my only real girlfriend. So, you know, all the girl yeah. stuff it all goes yeah. to her. And, uh, oh, yeah, this guy, he's my favorite. <laughs> he's, he's my best Hi. friend. This is Brad. <laughs> Hi, hi Brad. Oh yes. <laughs> he just woke yeah. up. He said. <laughs> oh, it's cool. It's, it's oh, are you still there? I yes. Lost her. Oh no. She's frozen. <laughs> can people still hear me? I can hear you. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Well, I, I should I check the it. Resolution looks pretty good. Well, on me, because you can see me. But I. I wonder if that's pre-stream though. Yeah, it's pre-stream. Yeah. Hello. Is this I'm still here. working? No, it's definitely no. I'm gonna see. I can't. So there's multiple people in there? Um, yeah, there's all these people up here. I like how Ray's in the shop perfectly. He's sleeping. Oh I know. I put I well I put him like that, obviously. <laughs> okay. Isn't he so cute? being adorable. I don't know where they went. Blab, yeah. Hello. I'm here. So it's in a public interview? Just that's it. Huh? She's Oh, I don't want to kick her. No. What? Hmm. There's. You kick her and then re invite her. I don't know what I'm talking about. That's like. Okay. 
What? Oh, oh Lord. Yeah. Oh yeah, he started to, but no one can see me. I'm it's sorry, okay. I... No, he didn't at all. I don't know if it he hardly touched it. Hello. <laughs> she can't see me. I don't know what check mark you're talking about. Hmm. Well, what do you want to do? I don't think this is working anymore. Let me know if people can hear me. They're giving me the hands, so I think that they can hear me. I, I but I can't hear her. Oh, you can see and hear me. Yes. I can't see you. I don't know. <laughs> I'm gonna. I. There you are. There. Okay. Yay. I'm sorry. I don't, you know, that's the only problem with technology, I think. I would say. <laughs> oh, I know. It freezes sometimes. Oh, well. Well, we're back. <laughs> Yay. Good commercial. Good commercial. Okay. <laughs> I forgot what we were talking about. Sorry. <laughs> it's fine. All right. Cool. All right, Let's cool. um continue. That was a good commercial break. Um, <laughs> okay. Where were we? Was I in the middle of saying something? I think we were talking about best friends. Yes, And we I was were. saying that I have, yeah, yeah, I have a few best friends, so it's hard for me to pick. But, I mean, I'm with Brad all the time, so it's like, yeah. I mean, we do everything together. <laughs> right. And, um, speaking of Brad, <laughs> you guys are engaged, am I right? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay, so um, let's see. Um, what the heck? Where am I? <laughs> it's hard to keep track. Yes. Okay. Yes. okay. Just because like technology issues, they just make your mind have issues too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. 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 So. We've also seen that online, both of you are very close with your families, and that's also very, very cool. Um, so yeah, I'm just saying. <laughs> so um, do you feel like that is important to, like how important is it to be close with your family? I mean, it's ridiculously important. I probably wouldn't be anywhere where I am without my family. Right. And, um, right. you know, having our families come out and support and come to shows and stuff, I think that's, that's awesome. Um, but yeah, I mean, we support each other too through everything. And whenever things get bad, it's always like, mm -hmm. well, we got to go record that new song together. Yeah. So, you know, it keeps us moving on. Yeah, for sure. And um, let's see. Um, as a follow-up question, uh, a little birdie, aka Twitter, um, <laughs> has shared with us last December that you are, oh, it was last December, huh? That you were engaged. And you guys were band members for five years, correct? Yeah. yeah. So um, that's congratulations. And I know the big day is in four months, right? Yes, it's on April 23rd. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, where, where are you guys? Do you know where your, your location is yet? Yeah. Or are you not um, letting that out? <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be in Phoenix. Okay. We're getting married awesome. on a golf course. Oh, that's beautiful. Wow. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. Are you ready for it? Uh, <laughs> so like, I'm a really calm person and I don't normally mm -hmm. get nervous about, you know, things like I, I try to keep myself stress free, you know, right. I didn't really care about, you know, a big wedding. I was just, you know, it's, it's a party. It'll be fun. But then okay. like a month ago, I had a nightmare where I woke up and it was my wedding day and I didn't have a dress and I hadn't oh invited gosh. anybody, you know, like one of those nightmares. So like, oh, now. Yeah. 
I'm super stressed out, <laughs> but I wasn't like, I was totally fine, but I'm sure it's, I have everything. I have my dress. I have all of the important stuff. So it's, it's going to be a good time. <laughs> okay. Well, you're, I'm, you're going to be a beautiful bride and I'm so excited to see pictures and stuff. <laughs> so yeah. yeah. Um, so I think you already kind of answered this, but is it more of a large wedding or like more like family event? It's a really small wedding. Okay. I wanted to keep it as small as possible, but um, yeah, I mean, we really wanted to start like inviting our, you know, our outer friends and then like maybe some of our bigger fans that come out to all of our shows, but it's, it's, mm -hmm. you know, if you invite one person then you kind of have to invite everybody yeah. and it just is a lot and it's a lot cheaper on us to, oh, for to sure. just have it to our small family. Yeah. Well, that's, that's a family, as we said before, is very important. So yeah. Um, yeah. So your story really sounds like a musical fairy tale. Does it feel uh -huh. like, like that to you? <laughs> a fairy tale? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I think like some of the songs that I write are not so happy, but I guess <laughs> there's some happy songs in there too. Well, but, I yeah. mean, it doesn't necessarily have to include your song, but just the way you and your band, you know, mates um, come together and work together, you know? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's it's pretty crazy the way that it all worked out. We're really happy with um, everybody that's in the band, and mm -hmm. you know, it's it's a really good business relationship too. We all live together, so it works oh, out really oh, well. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I feel like a lot of bands that live together tend to, you know, they survive better. You know, together. yeah. Well, we have a lot. We have a lot more time spent together. And right. It, it just allows us to get more stuff done. Really. Yeah. So, let's see. Okay. So, we're going to move on to our segment of the show called Failing Your Way to the Top. So, as a band, what would you say has been your biggest failures or setbacks? And share with us how you overcame them either spiritually, physically, and emotionally. Okay. Um, I think the biggest setbacks are just, you know, when you lose band members. I mean, it's mm. hard to keep band members especially as an independent band because it's expensive it's a lot oh, of yeah. hard work um I mean it just takes a crazy amount of dedication and, and your personalities have to mesh mm -hmm. so it's it's hard to find the right people right. um and even if you do find the right people sometimes it's just you know it's time to move on so yeah losing people is definitely the hardest part about it but um you know you pick yourself right back up and um thankfully the people that we have in our band right now are really it it just works really well for us and we all get along really well um so yeah i mean i think just you know trying to move past it keep working hard and it, it all it all falls all falls together correctly in the end well that's yeah of course like we said before everything happens for a reason so yes yeah, <laughs> um and as a follow-up question to that personally um what has been your biggest failure or setback? And again, how did you overcome it, you know, spiritually, physically, or emotionally? My biggest failure. Wow. <laughs> um, I don't know. I mean, I guess it's band related too. Uh, when we were on our, uh, we always call it fall tour because it was, it, it, we know which tour we're talking about when we yeah. call it. It was a three month tour. Um, I think, not last year, but the year before that, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, and we were on the tour for three months. We were on a um, tour bus, which sounds great, but it's a really old bus. Like there's no heat. There's oh. barely any AC, like nothing really works. You know, <laughs> we have beds and that's about it. The kitchen doesn't work or anything like that. Oh. Um, so, I mean, it was super fun and, you know, huge learning experience, but towards the end of the three months, it was starting, it was getting close to Thanksgiving and, mm -hmm. um, we were stuck on the bus because we were in New York and it was just totally freezing, like completely oh freezing. We couldn't go anywhere. We had no money left. And for what it, we had a couple shows drop off. So we had no shows. Oh. And I think everybody was just super aggravated with each other. There was not only us, but two other bands on the same bus with us. Oh, wow. So there was 12 people on, on the one same bus. bus. Wow. And there's only eight bunks. So, you, yeah. you know, some of us yeah. were sleeping together in these twin, tiny little bunks. Oh so God. it was just a big combination of things. And um, I mean, like I was, I, at one point I had just completely broken down. I had the, yeah. my cell phone in my hand with my dad's number ready to call to tell him like, 
fly me home. I can't do this anymore. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I just, I didn't do it anyway. You know, I put, put down the phone and strung through it. And I'm really glad that I did because it was a huge learning experience. And, yeah. um, yeah. and it just, you know, showed all of us that, you know, we could do it and yeah. we can make yeah. this happen. So, yeah. yeah, it's, it it's all crazy, mindset. Really crazy time. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, I mean, obviously, so that's really awesome that, you know, we're able to mindfully get yourself through that because it is all mindset. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Just knowing that this is this is what I wanted. This is what I wanted yeah. for so many years. So let's oh, yeah. just do it, you know. Yeah. Can't give up. <laughs> yeah. So, don't realize that. Wait a minute. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I thought I lost my place again. <laughs> Many people don't realize that musicians are entrepreneurs. So candidly and honestly, share with us how can being in, you know, indie band without the help of a major label, like most artists, you know, get. So and yeah, oh, and also don't be afraid to share any blood, sweat, and tear stories. <laughs> For uh, being an independent band? Yeah, without you know, without using I'm sorry, you cut out towards the end there. What was the last thing? Uh, you know, just not using, like, the label's help. Like, just as an independent band, just tell about that whole experience. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Well, um, I mean, that was one that I just kind of told us, us you know, trying yeah. to rough it on tour. Yeah. I mean, we survived on peanut butter and jelly, cereal, wow. oatmeal, and ramen. And that was about wow. it. <laughs> um, so, I mean, we've been through rough times for sure. Uh, but everything from the ground up. I mean, you know, learning how to use a camera for the first time. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I don't know, just lots of learning experiences all along the way, mm -hmm. trying to learn how to record. I mean, if you listen to yeah. our first album compared to our last album, there's a huge difference. And then even to our covers from yeah. our last album, there's a huge difference as well. So we just keep improving. But I mean, the help of a, a major label is a big deal. I mean, there's huge difference between major label help and an independent band. Um, yeah. But I don't know. It's it's cool because we still get to make our own decisions and um, keep our own direction on like what we want to do. And we're not getting told by other people. Plus, we get the self happiness from knowing that we did it by ourselves without anybody's help. For sure. For sure. I mean, it's very important, you know, as you guys have stuck together, that's also made you closer throughout all the struggles and everything. So I think that's, you know, it's really great. And so next question. <laughs> to date, what has been your biggest achievement as both a band and personally and why? Ooh, biggest achievement. I mean, I would probably say the, the Blink-182 show that we mm -hmm. played. Um, because it wasn't just like, oh, hey, do you guys want to play this show? It was a battle of the bands that was two rounds long and our fans had to come out and support us and vote for us and like, you know, come out to the show and buy a ticket. And right. it was really just kind of a triumphant day for us. And I kind of always say like the show at the show opening for Blink-182 was amazing. Don't get me mm -hmm. wrong. But I think the show that won us the opportunity to play with Blink-182 was my favorite because yeah. there was just so much love there and so many people were there supporting us and it was just cool to see everybody all in one place and where was that that was at uh the marquee theater in tempe it was oh, here okay. in phoenix okay well awesome congratulations on that that's Thank so you. exciting <laughs> yeah so, let's see um okay so as you know mentorship is a very important part of entre of the entrepreneurship game um, so who are your mentors and how have they influenced the woman you are today? Oh, wow. Um, I mean, obviously my mom is a huge mentor for me. I ask her everything, every decision that I make. I'm always like, mom, is this like, is this the right choice? <laughs> and she's always like, you always know the right choice. You don't need to ask me. I'm like, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you're a full grown woman. Now you can yeah. make your own decision. <laughs> um, um, but I mean, actually it sounds so lame but brad is a huge mentor for me um he's so a lame. really good businessman and very driven and he's i mean before i met him i thought i i was i loved music the most i was yeah. you know i i was so dedicated to making this my career and yep. he 
one upped me on that department. So I'm always looking up to him on on how to do that. And he's a producer and I'm, I'm right. kind of learning how to do that. I produce my own vocals and stuff, but um okay. just, you know, learning from him and all of my bandmates really, they're all really good at different stuff. So it's yeah. it's cool to, you know, learn from your friends. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I mean, having a, you know, a partner that is in your business is very important because, you know, you yeah. can learn from them and they understand it, you know. So right. I think that yeah. So yeah. if I have a hard day at work, I can come home and complain. And he's like, oh, right. yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, yeah. That's super important. Because when you have someone that's yeah. not in the industry, they don't really pro like understand what you're talking about. Yeah, so they it's try like, to help. But, you know, it's much easier if, if you know what's going on. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's I. That's great. Um, so, um, let's see. Follow up to that, actually. Um, sleep and rest is also a very important part of you know the game. Um, so Definitely. who are you? Um, I mean, wait a minute. Yeah, how much sleep would you say you have? You have a regimen. <laughs> um, I get a lot of sleep, and yeah. I'm not like. I actually don't like sleeping. I feel like I'm almost wasting my time or something, but right, yeah. I make sure that I go to sleep really early because I wake up. I like waking really? up early and like having the rest of my day. Yeah. I'm a morning person. Like I, I'm super strange, wow. but yeah, I like to make sure that I'm in bed, you know, at, at a reasonable time, like 11 or something. And okay. Um, okay. I was going to say, like, what is early to you? <laughs> I'm, uh, yeah. no, I'm probably like nine to 10 hours of sleep. So I'll wake up yeah. at like, like today I woke up at seven because I wanted to go to the gym, but um, yeah. it's normally like eight o'clock. Go girl, or... yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, All right. But Brad, on the other hand, he's an awful, like, He just woke up. He? <laughs> yeah, he just woke up, but he went to sleep at like five in the morning or something. Yeah, I, I feel like know. guys, guys do that. <laughs> it does I don't know. Of, yeah. That's so funny. Okay. So your song, Make It Loud is you on your um third studio ep and it's so powerful and empowering in fact it's our teen trap entre leadership movement anthem so huh? yes really? <laughs> yes it is <laughs> so can you walk us through what inspired the song and what is going through your mind at the, like what was going on through your mind at the time well that's awesome because that's probably it's hard to pick like a favorite song but that's definitely right. one of my favorite songs that i've written mm -hmm. um it's funny because the music for that song has actually been around for about 10 years now. Brad mm -hmm. and Cash had kind of written the basis for the song a long time ago. Right. And we even had it, uh, it was going to be on our first album. We had we had kind of messed around with it. But the song was so good musically that we were just like, we don't want to just push it out. You know, we want to make sure yeah. it's the right, right lyrics and right melody and everything. So kind of sat around for a while, tried a couple more times. And finally on this last album, we got it to work. Um, but I, I mean, that one was super important for me just because I don't know, it, it kind of brings together everything that I've always worked so hard for, um, with music. I wanted to inspire people. And, um, that song is all about just, you know, keep, pushing on keep keep working hard and mm -hmm. believing in yourself and um I had a lot of fans that were you know depressed or suicidal yeah. and I felt like it I just wanted them to know that if I could make it then you can make it too you just have to keep working and keep keep pushing on and someday you know you'll you'll get there and it really does get better so yeah that's that song was really important for, for me and I'm really glad that you guys like it. <laughs> yes, of course we like it. <laughs> I mean you're you are an amazing writer and um oh. yeah I'm I really congratulate you and look up to you on that. Um, That's awesome. Thank you. <laughs> yeah of course. So um what would you say to anyone especially a preteen or teen who's gone through all that you've gone through and needs to be reassured that they're going to make it? Wow. <laughs> um gosh that's that's crazy i i mean i think what got me through was just continuing to look forward and into what i wanted to do i knew i wanted to be a singer i knew that i wanted to be in a band and do music and when you're in school or when you're younger it just kind of feels like all that there is is school you go to day yeah. you go to school 
and all day that's all that there is and there's nothing mm -hmm. else outside of that but it's true and people said it all the time and you know you you'd never listen but then yeah as soon as high school's over it's that's it's gone i mean i don't speak right. to hardly anybody from high school anymore i don't think they even know my real name anymore <laughs> but it's like yeah it's like it's totally moved on from that so just know that there's like another life and um i i can't believe that you know there's i before i had graduated before i had moved on i didn't know that there could be this much happiness in the world like that's mm -hmm. truly how i feel so i mean it's out there you just got to find it <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah and that's that's great advice it's just um, occupying your time with the positive things for yeah, sure. Yeah. So, um, next question. <laughs> um, do you have any, like, do you have a mantra that you recite that helps you get through hard times or motivates you? Hmm. Mantra. I don't think anything specific, but I mean, the, uh, our fans, have gotten me through so much every time that i have ever doubted myself and felt like oh what is all this work that i've been doing forever yeah. my entire life like what's the point of this anymore and it's and somebody would send a message and say i just i loved your music it really has helped yeah. me so much and i'm like okay that's that's, that's why awesome. and it, <laughs> yeah it really yeah it keeps you going so and i don't think people realize that that even especially when I was even first starting out and I was nobody and, you know, I would get, I had one person come in and they would say, Oh, you, your music sounds really good. And I was like, yeah. wow, I have a meaning to live, yeah. you know, yeah. Like, it's yeah. really super yeah. important and just go around complimenting people sometimes, you know, it's a, it's a good outlook on life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I mean, even a compliment from one person, you know, that mm -hmm. you're improving your head at least nice today. Oh, really? <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it does. <laughs> but that's what I mean, you know, like just, you know, if you feel something, oh. you're like, wow, that, that person, no, no, yeah. I do. I think your hair does look nice. That's why I said that. But <laughs> okay. um, I, I mean, like if you, if you see somebody on the street and you know, you think something about them, wow, her shirt is really cool. Like, don't be yeah. afraid to tell somebody that yeah. that makes them feel good about themselves. Oh yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't say no to compliments so <laughs> yeah Absolutely. um so the last and final bonus question that we ask everyone here at Ooh. teen trek tv um if you lived in a country where entrepreneurship was banned would you take up a trade or rebel and become an entrepreneur anyway and why oh <laughs> that's really Ooh. that's it that's scary because like um, I'm not much of a rebel in that kind of sense. Like, what is it illegal? Am I gonna get thrown in jail? Well, that's you know that's a good question. I would say, <laughs> well, if you, I'm sure because there's so many entrepreneurs, if you were to start it, so many other people would follow. You know, so I feel like that's there's nothing true. that the government could do. You know, because it would just I don't be know. too. I'm not a rule breaker. I get really scared. <laughs> like, <laughs> I mean, like I like to push the boundaries on, you know, the things that uh I can push the boundaries on. But if it was like illegal, I don't know. <laughs> well, I guess I guess it. You never know until you're actually in the you know situation. So yeah, I understand. Absolutely. Yeah, I get that. So you're kind of you. But I mean, it's super important. It is a yeah. super important thing for me to be able to run my own life and mm -hmm. um, you know, it just it's it's a crazy life. I mean, I used to have yeah. a nine to five job. I worked at a desk and now I mm. get to manage my own life and work when I want to, where I want to. And it's just, it's, it's pretty awesome. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> yeah. Well, wonderful. That's, I mean, good answer being in the middle, not knowing, you know, it's, it's all good though. Cause it's, yeah. that's kind of like with everything, with everything you do or think yeah. about, you don't really know what you would do until you're actually experiencing it. So that totally right. makes sense. So yeah, that is our show for today. Thank you so much, Addy, for um, mm -hmm. chatting with us and inspiring us today. Thank you for um, having me. Of course, I feel so honored to be talking to you right now. <laughs> um, yeah, so from all of us at Teen Trap TV, remember that what you share and sow into the universe is nothing like what anyone else is doing. So uh -oh. don't stop doing it. Froze and to me. Oh no. <laughs> Well, at least the show's over.
Am I am I gone? Say bye, Ryu. Bye. Okay, well bye. Nice Jessie to see you. Frozen. Keep writing to what you're doing. Thanks for watching. Oh. Hi kitty. <laughs> Say bye. We're leaving. Have a good day. Bye. Okay, well, <laughs> to our viewers. Oh, she went away, but that's okay. To our viewers really quick, we wish you a spectacular new year that's filled with abundance, joy, growth, and treasured moments. May 2016 be your best year yet. Thanks for watching. Again, it's Faithy J143.